What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are talking about my top five favorite ledge fishing baits. It is summertime, we're out here on the TVA. So today's video, I'm gonna give you my top five or six or seven, depends on how long this video goes, top baits to catch fish out on the ledges. So what is ledge fishing? You know, out here on the Tennessee River, the TVA, you have Chickamauga, you got Gunnersville, you have these massive fisheries that are all current driven. So these fish, as they get done with the spawn, post spawn, they move out to deeper water, out to the river ledges, like you see behind me. We're sitting in current, got the spot lock going, but these fish will pull out to the breaks and sit on the ledges. Now, a lot of guys, if you know what you're doing out here on the ledges, you will spend as much, if not more time, behind your electronics, idling the ledges, looking for those mega schools of fish. And when you find them, you can catch them over and over and over. Every cast, it seems like, as long as they are fired up. So, getting into the baits, uh, right off the bat, my number one bait for trying to catch got a little bit of uh, weight going on echoing off these walls to uh, get those schools fired up so as you're idling around what you're looking for you're looking for the river break right so you break off you want to look for uh, the breaks the current seams closer to shoreline and any irregularity so say the front of an island top or the back of an island top that will create a current seam or a current break um, and then closer water to the shoreline where those fish can move up and move out and such. But uh, again, you're gonna spend a lot of time behind your electronics looking for those active schools of fish. But when you find them, it can be lights out. And my number one bait that I like to, to throw on those schools to try and see if I can get them going, I always start with reaction, is some kind of deep diving crankbait. So depending on the depth, this is the DT16. You know, you can go with a 6XD if they're a little bit deeper. Then you go up to your 8XD or your 10XDs. But the, the crankbait, you can get that thing down there, you can burn it, pause it, get that thing real aggressive, get it deflecting, and get those fish fired up. You don't have to catch the biggest fish in the school to uh, ignite the school. You're just trying to catch one. Once you catch one, get back in there as soon as possible because a lot of times it creates a feeding frenzy. Again, that crankbait, you can get it down there very quickly, sometimes, you can catch two at a time, but a crankbait, that DT16 or a DT20 or a 6XD is my number one bait when I'm trying to see if those fish are active and I'm trying to get them triggered. So I got six or seven rods behind me uh, and they all have a purpose. They all are, I like to switch through my baits. If I'm fishing through a school of fish and I'm getting them on the crankbait and all of a sudden it dies, then I will throw out, let's say, the flutter spoon. You know, the flutter spoon, it's a big hunk of metal, lots of different brands on the market. Uh, you know, the Lake Fork, the Nichols, the Strike King, the Ben Parker, all of them are great. They have different sizes, different weights, different actions. But the benefit of the spoon is it looks like a dying bait fish. So this thing's falling through, hits bottom, hop, hop, falls through. Again, those fish are down there looking around, they're in the current, and they're looking to feed. So if you cannot get them on the crankbait, a flutter spoon is another must have. You know, some days you'll blast them on a spoon, some days you'll blast them on a crankbait or a swim bait. We'll get into some of the other baits, but a uh, little tip for you. One thing I like to do with the flutter spoon, I do miss quite a few fish on the bites uh, on, on the flutter spoon. Uh, actually, I don't have this one. You can look at the teeth marks on here. I don't have this one rigged up with a stinger, but I will run a bobber stop right here, and then I will run a treble hook on a, on a split ring, free sliding on the face of that bait. So you can, uh, a lot of times when this thing's falling, you have a 50-50 chance of them eating the back side or the front side. So with that little stinger hook uh, tip, you get a lot more, a uh, lot better hookup ratio to bites. And it's, it's nice to uh, catch doubles on that as well. You know, when these fish are fired up, they go crazy, they get stupid. You just need to trigger that one and the whole school will ignite 
and that's when those big ones get really stupid and vulnerable. But uh, the flutter spoon, so a crankbait, a flutter spoon, and then I don't want to go finesse yet. I'll go with some kind of swim bait. Now, those of you guys, we'll start with the actual swim bait. I love throwing a Bastrix out on the ledges. You know, you can throw your favorite four, five inch swim bait, but that tr that old, you know, paddle tail, hollow belly Bastrix is just a must have out on the ledges. I really love throwing that Bastrix. It's just a different swim. You know, underwater, it looks a lot different than your 4.8 or whatever type of Kitek. You can you can throw like a six inch Osprey or a, or a big Scottsboro, but some kind of swim bait. Once you slow down with the, you know, you, you rip through there with the crankbait, you fish over them with the flutter spoon. Uh, once you need to slow down and, and kind of get those fish to commit, that's when I will go with some kind of swim bait. Typically a Bastrix or some kind of scrounger. Those of you guys that are not familiar with a scrounger, it is a swim bait head with a soft plastic blade on it. So it's almost a chatter bait, if you will, a vibrating jig, but it's soft and it fishes slower. So it's a wider thumping uh, bladed jig. Uh, it's kind of the best way I can describe it. It's not like a doot, 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 doot. it's like a doot, 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 doot. It just adds a lot of roll to your swim bait. I really like throwing this guy right here. You can see it doesn't have a an actual paddle tail on it. It's uh, again that that uh, scrounger head puts a lot of side to side action. This is the Scottsboro Sniper Shad. Uh, obviously the Jerky J. So much money's been won on that guy. Um, but uh, ledge fishing is so much fun. Obviously you got to put your time in. You got to find those fish, but. Um, once you find them, you can stay on them for days and days and days and just catch tons and tons of fish. I'm talking 30, 40, 50, 60 fish a day. It can get crazy. After I've ran through them with the swim bait, uh, kind of my final go-to is gonna be the hair jig. Now the benefit of the hair jig, you fish it through the same areas um, as you would the, the crankbait, the DT20 or 16 or 6XD, uh, but it just has a different fall and a different swim. You know, the hair jig, some days they want it, some days they don't, sometimes they want all white, some days they want some, some flashaboo, what, I mean, you can adjust the bait however you want, but you fish it through kind of the same areas that you would uh, the swim bait or the crankbait. It's just a, a different profile. You know, reel, reel, stop, reel, reel, stop, and lift up, let it fall. And that extra kind of puff in the water, uh, some days they are just on that hair jig. Really, really fun to fish. When they're on it, they're on it. And uh, again, ledge fishing, when those fish are fired up, um, it can be some of the best summer fishing you've ever had. Now, again, I kind of talked about the ledge fishing. Most of it, almost all of it is current driven. You know, if they are not pulling water, if your fishery's not moving water and those fish aren't pulling out to the ledges, um, you gotta go finesse. You know, start throwing a, a Nico rig or a shaky head. Um, but if they are pulling current and you've went through and fished all of those baits, but uh, say there's like a little rock pile or a little edge on the current break, that's when I will really slow down and finesse fish with a bigger worm. You know, I really like that uh, Magnum Baits Wormser. I always say Wormster, it's Wormser. That's an awesome shaky head bait. That's that big bull worm on that Strike King head. But I will throw some kind of big worm. You can throw a Texas rig, you can throw a Carolina rig, a Magnum shaky head. I like the shaky head if I'm getting real aggressive with my hops. You know, the, the Carolina rig, you're just kind of dragging, that bait's floating, suspended kind of behind the weight. You have a lot of a lot better bottom contact with that big uh, shaky head. Hop it up, let it fall, drag, shake, 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 hop it up, let it fall. You just have a lot more um, reaction. And uh, when, when you pop that rod tip, the time that your bait moves is almost instant, whereas a, a, 
a Carolina rig, it's really hard to get real reactive with it. But again, these fish are active, the water temps are warm. I mean, today we're looking at mid 70 water temps, low to mid 70 water temps, these fish are wanting to feed up. But again, if I have tried all the other baits and I'm on my key location, kind of stuff I talked about earlier, that is where I will slow down and pick it apart with a big worm. Uh, I typically don't throw a jig, but I will go with the big worm. And then one other bait I wanted to talk about, I don't know if we're at five or six or seven. Had a lot of success lately when other stuff won't work, the blade bait. You guys know, Matt and I being from Clear Lake, the West Coast, how much we love throwing a lipless crankbait, an LV500. We've, we've raved and raved and raved about this guy right here, the little Demiki Vault. That thing is an awesome on the ledges. You know, you gotta be careful where you're fishing it. If you're fishing rock or you're fishing, you know, timber laydowns, that sort of stuff down there in that 25, 30 foot range. You know, you will get hung up, so you gotta be careful. But that little blade bait is money. And the other one is a tailspin, that little uh, jackal. Uh, I'll link it down below in the video description. And then the Demiki Axe Blade. Those two tailspins, those fish are up feeding on shad. They're feeding on bait fish, schooling fish. Uh, if you can't get bit on these other baits that I just talked about, those baits are money too. So that is it. That is my lineup. If I am going out fishing for the day on the ledges, this is what I start with. These are my confidence baits. Uh, usually one, two, or three of all these will work. And every day it's different. Some will, some days you can catch them on the hair jig. Some days you'll catch them on the crank. But you want to keep rotating through those baits to really change up your baits and give those fish uh, something different. You know, when you're out here on the ledges, it can get a little crowded with, uh, well, depending on your fishery. But out here on Chickamauga, it can get really crowded with boat pressure. So you want to rotate through your baits very quickly. Give those fish a chance to see something a little different. Change up your angles, and you guys will have success this time of the year out on ledges. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. Down below, also in the comment section, I want to hear what your guys' favorite ledge fishing baits. You know, Matt and I are kind of new to it. You know, we've done it for the last few years, but we didn't grow up on the TVA or any of these big river systems. So, you know, we fish the California Delta that has a lot of uh, current, but not a lot of ledges uh, per se. So, um, but we have a lot of fun out here. We've caught a lot of fish doing it. Matt dumped a fish that was, I don't know, 10 or 11 last year, but uh, so much fun. You can have the time of your life and uh, catch tons and tons of fish. Again, you're gonna spend a lot of time looking, well, hopefully you find them right off the bat. You find them on the first stop, but to, uh, get, get ready to spend some time behind your side imaging, your electronics, looking for those ledges. Get a good uh, map card. You know, having a, a good map card, out here I run Lake Master Plus, uh, a good map card will save you a ton of time uh, finding those ledges and where they get close to shoreline, where those island tops are, and everything in between. But uh, enough rambling on that. Guys, leave me your favorite baits that you guys have comments in uh, on ledges down below in the comment section. I'll be anxious to read those and check those out and looking forward to it. But as always, guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. We do three videos a week, sometimes four, five, or six, depending on the week. But it's all to help you guys catch more and bigger bass. As always, guys, we appreciate you. Have a good one.